So you feel like you're not a success. You're not where you think you should be in life. Well, before you start feeling badly about yourself, you have to ask, are you setting your markers to success or are you using someone else's? And stay tuned and I'll explain the difference when doing an assessment of what your achievements are and should be for the future. Mankind can be brilliant. In a relatively short amount of time, we have gone from using a rock as a tool to putting a space shuttle in the universe. We're using drones to explore Mars now, for God's sake. On this Earth, we've had Beethoven, yoga, skyscrapers, and Disneyland. We have created the ability to connect with the entire world using nothing more than a pocket-sized screen. My God, think of even just a hundred years ago compared to today where even the Cambodian Buddhist monks own a smartphone. But at the same time, we also have the ability to walk around like a bunch of non-thinking drones. If the pack goes a certain way, we tend to follow, even if that path is headed to hostile terrain. I don't think I have to prove my point there. The creation of the Third Reich proves it for me. If you put 10 college kids in a classroom who adamantly state that a short line is longer, the 11th will more likely than not agree with them. Think that's ridiculous? They did an experiment that proved just that. As brilliant as human beings are, most of us have the wonderful attribute of not being able to think for ourselves most of the time. Whether it's the way we dress, our societal norms, or our status, we don't usually measure ourselves based on what we think. We use a ruler given by others. There are very few individuals out there. There are very few who can stroll into a formal dress party wearing blue jeans and a t-shirt and not even regard the stares upon them. Generally, people want to fit in and conform. And this also includes how they view themselves in terms of their perception of success. Of course, that's how you view yourself. The game was rigged before you even knew you were playing. From the second you entered your first day of school, society took your brain and put it in the washing machine and repeated and rinsed until you graduated. And even if you escape the machine of higher education, you'll still be surrounded by the other cogs who insist that the cylinders pound at full throttle. Now, I'm not advising to be the homeless street corner philosopher who won't get a job. The one who insists that he's living in total freedom until it rains. Giving up on life and not pursuing anything is a failure, for there will be nothing worse than the ghosts of talent who visit your deathbed, demanding why you didn't breathe life into them. That is truly a tragedy. What I'm saying is that people's path towards greatness take many forms. Some are rewarded with great financial success, and some are rewarded in other ways. Let's take two corporate executives, for example, both making about a quarter of a million a year. You may ask yourself, who couldn't be happy working for a quarter of a million a year, right? You would be surprised. Executive A may make that quarter of a million, but hates every single minute of his job. Imagine that, spending every single day of your working life despising what you're doing. And I've known people who are in that exact situation. Most spend about a third of their time working, and if you're that corporate executive, you're probably spending a lot more in that overtime asylum. Can you imagine putting in 60 hours a week, not to mention the commute of an hour to an hour and a half each way, slaving away in the big city at an office that you can't stand? Is that your idea of success? Yes, you have a nice house in the suburbs. I'm telling you it's not worth it. But now let's look at the second executive. Maybe he loves business. Someone who is absolutely enthralled with the art of the deal. He loves being in business, running a business, making a product, giving other people jobs, cutting through profit margins that overlook the skyline. That 60 hours a week doesn't seem like it to him because he really enjoys being there. And he has that same house in the grand suburbs. Same position, same job, two different people. Only one of them I would consider a success. And you know how you can tell the difference between the two? The successful one would do the job whether it paid a quarter of a million a year or 50,000. Let that point hit home for a while. And having a lot of money is all well and good. You should be paid a lot of money for hard work, creativity, and walking the path of excellence. But the ultimate aim of success isn't the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. 
It is a measure of what you are accomplishing in the world. Physical therapists get paid pretty well, but when I began my pursuit of physical therapy, I had no idea how much they made. I certainly didn't know that you could become a contractor, a travel therapist, and make a lot more, because I wasn't pursuing physical therapy school in order to make a lot of money. I was pursuing it because it was going to be my passion. Simply put, I wanted to be a healer. I wanted to help as many people as I could. The money came anyway, even more so as I got involved in the stock market. Funny how that end just seems to work out, doesn't it? But there have been many people who have left huge footprints in the world and not made a lot of money, like Mother Teresa or Gandhi. But look how many lives those two influenced. Are you really going to say that they weren't a success? They left an imprint in the textbooks of history. Or maybe your success is you worked a job that was so-so but raised a decent family. Raised a decent family, that is no easy task in today's age. Have you taken a look at our youth lately? Nowadays, if you have a kid who isn't addicted to a smartphone or shooting up a school, you've done well. And you don't know the influence on others those good children are going to be when they grow up to be good adults. And remember, while you're being that good parent and working that so-so job, there isn't a rule that says you can't train to get another job that you like better. The vision of your success should be your own. However, most people don't engage in this vision. Their vision of success is what the Jones is down the street. Everyone knows this is true. People feel this innate need to match their neighbor's possessions. And many people have kept themselves from an early retirement because of this philosophy. I have plenty of money right now to buy a new car if I want to. But instead, I drive a 15-year-old beat-up Honda with multiple dents in the side and cracks in the windshield. Because I don't care what I drive. I really don't care if people look at me and think I'm having financial problems. If they only knew how much I'm not. Also, in my long career of physical therapy, I have turned down multiple offers to be managers which would eventually lead to director. Becoming a director of a clinic is the ultimate success symbol of status in my profession. I want nothing to do with it. If I wanted to be a manager, I'd go work in business. In all my days when I worked as a physical therapist, I have never risen above a staff physical therapist. A simple practitioner who sees patients. Because that was my vision the very first day in Indiana University when I enrolled in my first pre-med course. Many of my classmates are not only directors, a few of them are hospital administrators by now. If I were to ever go to a college reunion, do you think I would ever feel the need to explain to my once classmates why I'm still a lowly staff therapist? Not really. I don't envy them for their extra money. I hope they're happy with their careers. I know if I was a director of a clinic, I certainly wouldn't be. And eventually I became a writer and the creator of this channel for the same reason. Not to strike it rich, but to help people. The why of my mission that Tony Robbins claims you have to have. So when you're measuring your own success, the very last thing you should be doing is looking at someone else, even if they live on your block. Your mission of success is to leave the world a better place than you found it, to pursue a craft you love to the best of your ability. And if you haven't obtained that passion that you love, then it's time to reevaluate your life, no matter how old you are. For pursuance of excellence is the greatest indicator of success. And for those who step forward on that path, they will find the greatness that awaits them. I'm Charles Hurst, author of The Shepherd and the Running Wolf, A Path to Forgiveness on the Pacific Crest Trail. Also, Reinvention of Self, How to Change Your Life and Being Forever, both found on Amazon in the links above and below. I don't ask for donations. If you buy one of my books for a couple bucks, then you'll get something of great value in return, for that is the capitalistic way. If you're ready to become an alpha warrior, hit that subscribe, tap the like, and smash the bell, and I will see you at the next sunrise.